back at the lake today for my run cast. I like these trees over here. They have the kind of super smooth bark that uh, aspens have. I'm from Colorado, for those of you who don't know that. And uh, I fucking I love aspen trees. I'm gonna see if you guys can geek out about this bark with me. It's so cool. It's not actually as like smooth as aspen. It actually seems like it's maybe um, peeled a little bit, but that's beautiful. If my mom were here, I would save a bunch of this bark for her because <laughs> as a Colorado girl, I have hippie parents and uh, my mom would enjoy some nice bark that she could do stuff with. I don't really know. Um, so I was just, when I was just at the gym just now, I was um, observing something that got my head spinning. I was kind of joking with Aaron about it. Uh, I was realizing that like the, um, what is the word? The rites of passage and like the cycles and the rituals of training boys in Thailand, like Thai boys as they're coming into the gym is so, so different based on when you start Muay Thai. So if you start as a little kid, which is when I recommend you start Muay Thai, if you start as like a little boy, usually they come with friends. Like usually they come in as like a little class. There will be like three of them. There's like a group in like generally the same age and then they'll kind of like come up together. And that's really nice because they can kind of like train together and learn together and they're like a little pod. Um, I haven't generally seen more than like two or three at a time, um, but when there's only one, they usually just get like direct attention. They get kind of like put to the side to do something and then they get given pads for a little bit and then they're like put to the side again. That's usually when they're like someone's son and so the trainer will like work with his son for 10, 20 minutes. It depends on how little the kid is, but like little kids don't get tons of direct attention when they're at a gym. They're basically left to run around and like burn off a bunch of energy. They're told to do things like marching knees or whatever the thing is. When you have a class of them, like a group of three or four, that's when you turn it into like a little mini seminar and they all have to do it together. And the training is actually pretty good at that uh, level of those if you have that many. Because by turning it into a little class, everyone has to do the same things and you can kind of organize it. And I remember Krunu was saying, I can't remember exactly what the phrase is in Thai, but I think it's like trying to keep crabs in a net. Um, it's basically like they will just constantly keep climbing out of the net. It's, it's what we in English say, it's like herding cats. Um, it's difficult, but you can kind of like organize the kids when you have a number of them like that, because you can get them doing the same thing together and kind of pay attention to them. It's, if it's fewer than three, honestly, but if it's just one, it's, they really don't get that much direct attention. So that's like the ideal starting when you're little. Um, at that age, they're kind of like pre-gendered. So like little boys and little girls are kind of treated the same at that age. And when you're really little, you're kind of expected to cry. So like little boys in training will cry all the time. They'll cry because they're overwhelmed. They'll cry because they're tired. They'll cry because they don't want to do it. Like there are a million reasons why they cry and they just cry and either you're knocked out from the crying and they're like, okay, go do this other thing, or they make you keep doing it because they're trying to toughen you up. As you get older, it kind of becomes a little bit more like, no, you have to hang in there kind of thing. But like little kids are really not put through very rigorous, hard training. When you get to like 12, around about 12, I haven't seen a lot of like eight, nine, 10 as the starting age, but in Thailand, that's still pretty little. Like they look really little when they're eight, nine, and 10. So maybe I'm just misjudging ages and I have seen that. And then they're treated a little bit more like the little kids. But when they're like 12, 13, this is a rough time to start Muay Thai. Um, what I was talking to Aaron about and I was laughing because there's this kid at the gym who's the nephew of um, Tapia's wife, I think. And so um, he's part of the family. He has not really trained Muay Thai prior to this. I thought he was older than 12. Like he's actually kind of, I'm surprised he's 12. Um, he seems a little bit bigger, but mentally, emotionally, totally 12. Um, and there are a couple of other kids that are like 13, 15 there at the time. So I'm contrasting similar age, but the like familial tie makes a huge difference in how this kid is treated. 
So if you're like 13, 12 to 15 or whatever, and you're starting Muay Thai, they'll either just kind of totally ignore you because you really suck and you like basically are meant to go do stuff that they tell you to do, like just hit the bag. They don't instruct you. They're like, you just go hit the bag until I'm ready for you. And then when you get on the pads, they kind of like show you some stuff and teach you a little bit of stuff and then throw you into the clinch. And uh, it's not, it's not too bad because it's mostly like you get attention when you're on the pads and then you're completely ignored otherwise because like you're just not good. Um, and so they'll, they'll make a few corrections here and there, but it's like, we're just going to let the water run over the stone and you'll get better over time. The part when you're someone's family member, as long as you're like semi, semi close, <laughs> I don't know, like Thai families can be really big. So you can have like distant family members that will be kind of ignored more or less the same as like just a customer. Um, but what I saw happening to this 12 year old is something that I've seen a lot. Uh, and with even kind of younger kids, as long as they're like familiar part of the family, is that you just get humiliated all the time. And it's the worst comes from his cousin because uh, the difference in age is maybe like four years. I think Puka's like 18. So it's like pretty, pretty normal. Like if you're siblings, I have siblings. So like the, the age difference, you can see the like shit rolls downhill kind of thing in how you're treated by your older siblings. Um, and I, as the youngest, totally like key into all of this stuff of like how you're treated by your older family members and stuff. But like Tapia is just like always on this kid about like, oh, your stomach hurts. Like, why aren't you doing something? Uh, if you're just sticking around and not actually training, go outside and run 20 laps. Like it's kind of hardcore. And then when Pook was holding pads for him, he's just making fun of him the entire time for like the way he stands and the way he throws a punch. And like this kid fought once twice maybe like he's not brand brand new but in thailand you can have two fights when you've only been training for like three months like this is not he doesn't know what he's doing so he looks ridiculous because he doesn't know what he's doing but the way they teach him is basically this like hazing process and so this is why i think it's really hard to start muay thai when you're in that like teenage range because you're either completely ignored which is i think what i would prefer or you're just completely humiliated and ridiculed because it's your family and they're like ribbing you and this is kind of like masculine training hazing i don't know what the thing is but what, what why i'm talking about this is that we as westerners come to a gym as babies not knowing anything or we think we know something because we've trained in the west but we're actually like kind of 12 years old in terms of our skills when we get to thailand and they will never treat you like this. Like they don't treat you like a little kid, which they actually should. They should put you in the like marching up and down, doing knees on the ropes, blah, 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 this kind of thing. But you're an adult, so they're not going to. It'd be like if you met someone who didn't know how to ride a bike, you'd be like, how the fuck do you not know how to ride a bike? <laughs> like this is something that in your culture you learn when you're really little. So if you're gonna train an adult to ride a bike, you're not gonna put training wheels on it. Like you're not gonna teach them holding the seat the same way that you would for a, I don't know, four year old, how old are you when you learn how to ride a bike? Six. And um, then we're also not treated really like the teenagers because we're customers. So like, we're not completely ignored because they have to pay attention to us because we're paying for it. Although there is a lot more ignoring you than I think Western people are anticipating when they come to Thailand. Like you think that as a customer, someone's gonna take keen interest in you and you show that you're interested and they're gonna like really show you a bunch of technique. That's not really how a lot of real Kai Moi are structured. Now that there are more gyms that are like commercially structured, I think there is more of a chance that people will kind of hold your hand through all the different stages, but mainly you're taught by the other people in the gym, like in a real Kai Moi. So like the 14 year old will be teaching an eight year old as long as he knows more than him. Um, a lot of the kids, they finish, like the teenagers finish their pad work and then immediately hold pads for someone younger than them or someone their same age or something like that. So like when I got to Petrangrung, the boys were like 12 years old. They're all like 22 now, um, but they would hold pads for each other. They would hold pads for the littler ones. And they'd been doing that for years. Um, when they had a fight coming, they would have the crew holding for them. But like, if it was busy, your job is to take care of the little ones, like the younger ones kind of thing. Um, and it's just such a strange thing as a Westerner to come here and be a baby in an adult body that has to be treated a completely different way because of your age and your status than you would be if you were actually like a beginning student. 
And this is also why I laugh so hard when Westerners like to be like, I'm treated like a Thai. Because if you were treated like a Thai, you would never say it as like a positive thing. <laughs> like I've actually kind of hated every time I have been legitimately treated like a Thai. Um, because it's a lot of ridicule and being ignored and like <laughs> being scolded and lots of things that aren't fun and aren't good. Um, but so that's what I was monitoring and noting at the gym. And it's something that I've seen many, many times over the years for the like years and years I've been here. I've seen this dynamic over and over again. Um, at Lana, my first two years up in Chiang Mai, Den had two nephews that were pretty little. I think they were probably like eight years old. And like he would train them and he would teach them. And he actually had pride in teaching them Muay Thai because he saw this as like part of his family. And so he spent time actually teaching them uh, techniques and things like this, which you don't always see. Uh, but he also had this like kind of ribbing, making fun of them. One of them walked in a way that he thought was really funny. And like, it's, I come from a family that's mostly men. So I understand this kind of like using sarcasm and joking and kind of ribbing each other as just being like masculine setting. Like that's just kind of what uh, any kind of sport culture of like team sports of boys and men will totally just like take the piss out of each other all the time because that's like how it works kind of thing. But it's kind of incredible because this does not, and I have not really trained significantly in any way in gyms that have lots of female fighters or any female fighters other than myself really or even Thai female fighters. Like the times that I went to Petong Kong in order to kind of work with the girls there to kind of help them learn some of the clinch that I had learned because they didn't really have anyone to like pull that information into the gym. It's an all female gym at the time that I was visiting there. And it was the same structure where like they would hold for each other, they would train each other, the older ones would kind of look after the younger ones and they'd tease each other, but they tease each other in a very different way than how boys and men tease each other. Um, they also flirted with each other a lot, which was really cute. Uh, but you know, it's just part of gym culture. Uh, and <laughs> when you try to like, uh, fantasize as a Westerner about like, I'm just going to inject myself into this culture, into this process and like, have it be, uh, normal and I'll be treated exactly the way <laughs> that someone my age should be treated. Uh, it's weird because we don't we don't actually fit into any of those categories. That's what I was thinking about. I'm gonna start running. I'm hoping it's not gonna rain on me. Hopefully that was interesting to you guys. It was interesting to me. And uh, I don't know. This kid's gonna get toughened up eventually. Like they're trying to stiffen his upper lip. And uh, he's a sweet kid. He's like very very sweet. And when they rib you and kind of like toughen you up like this, they don't like jade you or anything like that. You don't get jaded. Um, but he will, he will be toughening up in the next couple of years. If he stays for a full year at the gym, I anticipate some significant changes in his disposition, but in a good way. I'm going to have to go up these stairs. I think I'm going to run them. I think that might be kind of cool. They're pretty shallow.